This is my second video lesson for Unit 8. In this lesson, we'll be learning how to use the combined gas law. Go to page 6 in the class packet. Motivation. What is a vacuum and how is the pressure measured? Pressure is measured using a barometer. Take a moment to watch a TED video about a barometer. The link to the video will be in the descriptions. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I'll be able to calculate the pressure, the volume, and the temperature of a gas using the combined gas law. Work number two will be a junipod based off this lesson. There will be a quiz junipod on PowerPoints 1 and 2. We'll first go over the units used in the combined gas laws. In pressure, the units is pascal, kilopascal, atmosphere, torr, which is equal to millimeters of mercury. Torr comes from Torricelli from the video. One kilopascal is equal to a thousand pascal. One atmosphere is equal to 101,325 pascal. One atmosphere is also equal to 760 torr. The units for volume are milliliter and liter. One liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. One cm cube is equal to one milliliter. The units of temperature are Kelvin and Celsius. To convert between Kelvin and Celsius, we have to use the equation Kelvin is equal to 273 plus Celsius. This equation is on table T on your reference table. You always have to convert from Celsius to Kelvin when using the gas laws. Why is that? Because to avoid negative numbers, zero Kelvin is the lowest temperature and it's the absolute scale. The units can be found on table D on your reference table. STP can be found on table A. If you have 116 kilopascal, how much atmosphere is present? To convert from kilopascal to atmosphere, you're going to use the conversion factor on table A. 101.3 kilopascal is one atmosphere. So if you have 116 kilopascal, you just have to cross multiply and solve for x. That will be 1.145 atmosphere. Questions about the gas law may mention a sealed rigid cylinder with a movable pistons. This is what it looks like. The gas is inside the cylinder and the piston can move up and down based off the volume, the pressure, and the temperature changes of the gas. Now we'll go over each of the gas laws. The first one is Boyle's law. His laws deals with the pressure and volume relationship. In this GIF, we have a cylinder with a movable piston. We're applying pressure to the piston by pushing it down. So pressure is increasing. The volume is decreasing as a result. The molecules are going to hit the walls more often. That's why the pressure is increasing as volume is decreasing. So the relationship between pressure and volume is that as pressure increases, volume decreases, vice versa. The pressure is inversely proportional to volume. If you were to multiply the pressure and volume in each case, it equals to a constant. So this would be a mathematical equation to represent this relationship. Here's a real life example. Here's a basketball air pump. Assuming that the cap is on and is closed, if you were to apply pressure and push the handle down, the volume inside the cylinder would decrease. Here's another GIF of the relationship between pressure and volume. As you can see, pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. As pressure increases, volume decreases, and vice versa. Here's a graph showing the relationship. We're assuming temperature is constant. The next gas law is Charles' law, which deals with the temperature and volume relationship. Here we're assuming pressure is constant. Here we have a GIF with a cylinder with a movable piston. The pressure will be held constant. We will be applying heat to the cylinder, therefore increasing the temperature. As temperature increases, the gas molecules will move faster. As they move faster, they'll apply more force inside the container, pushing up the piston. If they push up the piston, the volume increases. So temperature and volume have a direct relationship. As temperature increases, volume also increases. Volume is directly proportional to temperature. If we look at the data table from the GIF, the temperature in Celsius was converted to Kelvin for gas laws. Volume over the temperature in terms of Kelvin gives us a constant. Here is a mathematical relationship between volume and temperature. 
V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. A real life example would be a hot air balloon. If we heat up the gas inside the balloon, the volume of the balloon will increase. Here's another GIF of the temperature and volume relationship. As we heat up the gas by increasing the temperature, the gas molecules will move faster, therefore causing the balloon to expand. In the opposite case scenario, if we decrease the temperature, the volume will also decrease. The next gas law is the Gay-Lussac law, which deals with the pressure and temperature relationship, assuming volume is constant. In this GIF, we have a cylinder with no movable piston, therefore the volume is constant. When we heat up the container, the temperature will increase, the gas molecules will move faster. As you can see, the pressure is increasing because the gas molecules are hitting the walls of the container more often at a greater force. The temperature and pressure have a direct relationship. As temperature increases, pressure of the gas also increases. So pressure is directly proportional to temperature. From the data table in the GIF, pressure over temperature in terms of Kelvin gives us a constant. So P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. A real life example of this would be a pressure cooker. As you increase the temperature, the pressure inside the cooker will increase. The last law is Avogadro's law. You should know that at STP, one mole of gas takes up 22.4 liters of space. So if you have two moles of gas, it will take up double the space, 44.8 liters. So the relationship between moles and volume is that as moles increases, the volume increase as well. There's a direct relationship. So moles is directly proportional to volume. The equation is V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Now take a moment to watch a tether video about the gas laws. The link to the video will be in the descriptions. Learning trick number one, as the temperature of a gas increases at constant pressure, the volume of the gas does what? Pause the video and resume once completed. Temperature and volume have a direct relationship according to Charles' law, so the answer is choice two. On the regions, you do not need to know the names of each of the gas laws, you just need to know the relationships. Learning trick number two. As the volume of a fixed mass of a gas increases at constant temperature, the pressure of the gas will do what? Pause the video and resume as completed. This is a pressure and volume relationship. That's Boyle's law. So the answer is choice one. It's an inverse relationship. Learning check number three, the table below shows the mass and volume data for four samples of substances at 298 Kelvin and one atmosphere. Which two samples could consist of the same substance? Pause the video and resume as completed. Since mass is related to moles and moles and volume have a direct relationship, you're looking for a mass to volume with the same ratio. That would be sample A and sample C, so the answer is choice two. If we combine the gas laws we just talked about, we get the combined gas law equation, which is P1 times V1 over T1 equals P2 times V2 over T2. This equation can be found on table T on your reference table, so there's no need to memorize it. The purpose of this combined gas law is to show how changing pressure, volume, or temperature influences the other variables of a gas, assuming a pure substance. Keep in mind the number of moles remain the same as you change the pressure or volume or temperature, the law of conservation of mass, Here's a catchphrase to help you memorize the equation. Please vomit over toilet. If one of the variables is constant, we can modify the combined gas law equation. We set the constant variable as one. Here are the variations. Here are the graphs of the relationship of the gas law. For Boyle's law, volume versus pressure. Charles' law, volume versus temperature. gay lasik law, temperature versus pressure. Avogadro's law, volume versus moles. Make sure you're able to recognize these graphs on the regions. Now I'm going to go over the steps on how to solve problems involving the combined gas law. On the regions, is usually asked as a multiple choice or free response. If it's a free response, they might ask for a setup. Usually for combined gas law questions, they give you some initial condition. 
Then some event happens and the conditions change. For question one, a balloon holds one liter of air at a temperature of 298 Kelvin and a pressure of 1.1 atmosphere. The balloon is left in the car on a hot day and the temperature rises to 320 Kelvin while the gas pressure increases to 1.2 atmosphere. What is the volume of the balloon under these new conditions? The first step is to figure out what is given and what we're solving for. We're given the initial pressure, volume, and temperature, and we're solving for the new volume. The new volume is set as x. Next, we plug into the combined gas law equation. Then we use a calculator and solve for x. x is equal to 0 0.98 liters, and that is the final answer. In the second question, a 3 liter sample of a gas is at 288 Kelvin and 2 atmosphere. If the pressure of the gas is increased to 3 atmosphere and a volume is decreased to 1.5 liters, what will be the Kelvin temperature of the sample? So try to do this yourself. Pause the video and resume as completed. So the answer is choice 1, 216 Kelvin. So we're given the pressure, the volume, and the temperature and we're solving for the new Kelvin temperature. So when we plug into the equation and we solve for x using a calculator, we get 216 Kelvin. In question three, if I have initially a gas at a pressure of 12 atmosphere, at a volume of 23 liters, and at a temperature of minus 73 Celsius, and then I raise the pressure to 14 atmosphere and increase the temperature to 27 Celsius, what is the new volume of the gas? Pause the video and resume once completed. In this question, you have to be careful because they give you Celsius. So the first step is to convert all the temperature in Celsius to Kelvin. We cannot use Celsius in gas laws because it's not the absolute scale. We have to use Kelvin. Minus 73 degrees Celsius is 200 Kelvin. 27 degrees Celsius is 300 Kelvin. In the question, we're given pressure, volume, and temperature initially, and we're solving for the new volume. So we're going to plug into the combined gas law equation, and we're going to solve for x, which is our new volume. If we cross multiply and use a calculator, we get x is 30 liters. Now try to do the rest of the practice yourself. Pause the video and resume once completed the practice. Here are the answers. In the last part of the lesson, we're going to go over conceptual gas questions on page 10. Assuming one variable is constant, what happens if another variable has an increase or decrease? So I'll show you the dummy number method in which we use simple numbers to solve conceptual questions. For example, as the pressure of a given sample of gas increases at constant temperature, the volume of the gas does what? So first, we're going to write out the combined gas law equation. Since temperature is constant, we can ignore the temperature in the equation. Next, let's use simple numbers for the initial pressure and volume. Let's use one. So we have one atmosphere of pressure, one liter of volume. In the question, we must figure out what happens to the volume as pressure increases. Since pressure is increasing, we're going to pick a number that's bigger than one, like two. X is the new volume. If we solve for X, we get X is 0.5. Notice that the volume decreased by half. So as the pressure of a gas increases at constant temperature, the volume would decrease. This is part of Boyle's law. Learning check number six. When the pressure exerted on a confined gas at a constant temperature is half, the volume of the gas does what? Pause the video and resume once completed. But the answer is choice two, doubled. If you use the dummy number method, we're going to set the initial pressure and volume as 1, and then we have the pressure, so that will be 0.5 atmosphere. So when we solve for x, which is the volume, it will be 2 liters, which is double of 1 liter. So the answer is choice 2. Now try to do the multiple choice, questions 1 to 5 on your own. Pause the video and resume once completed. So here are the answers. If a question 1 is increased, 
Question 2 is also increase. Question 3. Question 4. Question 5. This concludes the video lesson. Remember to do the Junipa homework and quiz.